Hello everyone and welcome back. I thought I'd do something different and just have a good old chat. The weather is pants because we got Storm Kieran so yeah I just thought I'd bring you up to speed on what I've been up to, what is coming up on the channel because some very exciting stuff. I got loads to show you as well. So in the last video um, we did the interfacing and we had a look at the differences and I said on the next video we'll do fusible fleece. Well, I got too excited and I just dived right in and did. And I need to show you because it's amazing. Look at that bag. Isn't it gorgeous? It's got some pockets on the side. Learned how to do these kind of tabs and rings. I didn't fusible fleece the handles because I didn't know if it'd be too thick or how that would work. And then on the inside, there's some more pockets. It's just such a huge bag and it is just, I'm so proud and pleased with this one. But the fusible fleece, it gives it the stability and the structure, like, amazingly. And it just feels like a nice warm bag. So I was really pleased with that one. It was, again... That was the bag I was talking about that I really wanted to do that would test some skills. And it did. Um, but I loved it that much. I went to made another one. <laughs> now I ran out of material for this one. So I've only been able to do one strap. I finished this one last night. Uh, but I did this one. This is more like a linen fabric. Whereas the other one was poly cotton. This was a linen. So I didn't fusible fleece this one. I just did the interfacing. What we did on the other video. And again, because this material was much stiffer anyway, it's given it the stability, its own frame. Again, the pockets. Oh, I said, I'm just so proud of what I'm learning and making that I just wanted to show you all. Um, and then, now this one was supposed to have, uh, it's supposed to be for a book. But then I realised it's the perfect size for my tablet. So, and I don't have a tablet cover. So, tablet goes in there. This is with fusible fleece. It's got a little button and a pocket. I'm not entirely sure what I'd put in there. Maybe earphones or a bookmark if you're putting a new book in to take away with you. Uh, but it's lovely and roomy. This also, this pattern again is from Happy Days. Um, they do a giant one for like um, an annual, um, so you get those patterns, but chuffed a bit to that one again. That was a, a good test. I did mess up with this one. You probably, I probably shouldn't be showing you all this, but I am. Um, I sewed this on the inside, so it went the wrong way, so I had to unstitch and re-sew, which is a shame, but what do we always say? We're learning. <laughs> um... And then, oh, so excited. So there's a pattern for a Terry's Chocolate Orange cover. But it's so adorable. But I don't have a Terry's Chocolate Orange in the house at the minute. So I did a bath bomb. I love these bath bombs. They're the best. Bomb Cosmetics. Love them. So... All it is essentially, I've made loads of these. So this is what they look like. And then you just pull the string. And once it's got some weight in it, it makes your petal. But I've done a couple of Christmassy ones. I've done a really pretty purpley one as well. That'd be nice to give someone for a birthday maybe. I've got a few birthdays coming up. So if you're watching, you might end up with it. <laughs> Um, but honestly, they're just they're just gorgeous. But yeah, they're meant for Terry's chocolate orange. But someone else pointed out you could also just fill it with like sweets, different like Forever Rochers maybe, the lint chocolates, or just to pick a mix. I know the kids have had it maybe. But I just they're beautiful. I had a huge fabric delivery. I know I showed you the last one on a short, but I've had even more since. Someone asked me in one of my videos, is your room always that tidy? No. 
see if I can move out of the way. There's some, there's some more on the floor behind the fan. Oh, you can't see, it's just Mr. Alfie with his Halloween bow tie. Hey, but yeah, um, fabric stash is growing now. The main reason that I wanted to start YouTube was crochet because I learned to crochet in 2017 and I love it, couldn't stop. I hoarded wool like I had major problems, it was unreal. And when I realised I didn't want those colours wool or that particular style of wool, I sold it and was like, not hoarding again. I'm already heading that way with fabric. What can you do? But got out the crochet hooks the other day because I had some special yellow yarn and I made a train jellyfish. How awesome is he? She, whatever you want to call it. Giant. When you're making it, before you attach the bottom on, because that's made in a separate piece, I put it on my head. It was like a bonnet. It was really funny. But I am so pleased with this little guy. And his tentacles. But yeah, I really want to start um, Learn to Crochet with me series because I'm halfway through doing um, like a shawl cardigan thing with pockets and it is the most basic stitch ever that you guys could do it, whether you're a beginner, advanced or whatever. And I really want to finish that off, but I won't do it until I've recorded the Learn to Crochet so you can also make your own one with me so i'm going to start working on that next week um i can't guarantee when the video will be up to actually learn to crochet but some point in november you'll be learning to crochet so go and get your crochet hooks get a ball of wool get a cuppa for when the video drops and let's crochet you can make one of these this was from a pattern it was a free pattern if you search repeat crafter me i'll post the link down below to the pattern but it's so easy she did hers with a scalloped edge but i wanted a frilly edge so i changed that bit on mine um which you'll soon gain the knowledge with my tutorials and be doing your own little modifications but yeah i was really really pleased with that one i can't wait to have him uh, on his own shelf somewhere i need to find somewhere for him to go um but yeah, it's been such a busy few weeks making things. I've even had some orders off the family. They're like, oh, will you make me this? I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> it was really exciting for them to say, wow, that's really good. I want that for my friends. Or I want that for me. It was just such a proud moment. I love learning and conquering different things. So yeah, thought I'd keep you up to date with what's going on and what is coming up. So there's going to be a lot more crochet on the channel we've done a few bits of sewing and i've written out the list that i want to make people for their christmas presents off me so i need to crack on with that but i want to get you all crocheting because there's a few crochet alongs with me that i want to do so i need to get them going but if you are learning i've kept my first ever attempt at crochet and it's terrible, but um, I want it framed on the wall because it's where I started. Look at that. I had no idea what the word tension meant. I didn't know that you needed to put two in a corner. I've somehow gone backwards and sideways at one point. But keep your first ever piece that you do, no matter how bad or even good. If you just nail it, if you're a natural, keep it and frame it. Because this will go in a little box frame on the wall one day when I get round to it. And then some of the ladies at work saw me trying to do it on my lunch break at work. And they showed me how to do it. And I made a granny square. That was my first ever granny square. And then I wanted to learn how to go in rows. So these were my first ever pieces. But stick with it. Don't get frustrated. But I can talk you through all of that once the time comes. And my wonderful husband recently got a 3D printer. And I was like, I know what you can do for me with those. So if you're a serial project starter like I am, you've got projects everywhere unfinished, you put them down, you go back to them 
weeks later you can't remember what crochet hook you used i got him to 3d print me some little buttons with the number on of the different hooks that i use frequently four and a half and i literally just attached them to the project like that and that way i can never forget how awesome are they i was so pleased with them so now i can start even more projects than i usually do which is terrible and also he did like a modular sewing spool holder thingy so it's basically that these sticks clip in and then you've got the things around the outer edge so you can like attach as many as you need and they're long enough to fit your sewing spool i think it's called a spool and your bobbin on the top that's brilliant it fits in my my trays just perfectly whereas before i had them just chucked in a drawer now i have organization <laughs> so yeah that's that but for now from me mr alfie alfie there we go you've got to show the people's you mm -hmm. so yeah from me mr alfie and the jellyfish we'll see you soon thank you for watching please like and subscribe and if there's anything you want to see me do on the channel please let me know bye